Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Feels like we were just here. Did we even leave? I'm not sure. Today, we're gonna be working on carving up a pumpkin. Ooh, ooh, where is it? Over here, out of this log. So make sure to stick around so you don't miss it. Guys, like I said, we're gonna be carving up a pumpkin out of this log. Obviously, you're gonna need your chainsaw. I'm gonna be using my battery-powered saws today. I've got my MSA 200 and my MSA 160. The 160 has a dime tip bar, so we're gonna be using that for a little more refined work. The plan is just a simple pumpkin with a stem, nothing crazy. The next video, we'll work on doing a jack o' lantern. First, we gotta get a pumpkin design down. Now, the thing that's really helpful is this log's already round. If you got some weird shaped log, then guess what? Just make a weird shaped pumpkin. No big deal. You don't need a perfectly round pumpkin. If you've ever been to the pumpkin patch, they are not perfect. They're always like a hot mess. The best looking one, you flip it over and it's flat. Or it doesn't stand up or, you know what I mean. So the cool thing about pumpkins, they don't have to be perfect unless you're a complete perfectionist and you know, that's you. So whatever make it perfect. Anyway, a few things we're going to need today. Obviously a log, your jaw horse, a couple chainsaws. I'm going to be using an angle grinder with a flap disc, you know, just a four inch flap disc on there, 80 grit, and I'm going to be using a flame bit from Sabretooth in my die grinder. Those are the tools I'm going to be using. Uh, and some orange paint and some green paint. So that's pretty much it. Oh, maybe my crayon. I don't know, there's not gonna really gonna be a whole lot to draw. So let's put some safety gear on and uh, start making some cuts. Okay, right, so I cut my logs that I'm gonna do pumpkins out of when they're like that eight inch girth or smaller, about two foot long, maybe a little longer. So I can put it in the jaw horse and it sticks up. This way I can actually cut two pumpkins out of one piece. I could do this pumpkin, get rid of it, slide the log up a little bit, cut the second pumpkin, get rid of it and move on. It's a little time saving. Sometimes it makes it a little easier to carve because we're just making simple pumpkins with a stem sticking up. What I like to do is grab the crayon, figure out where you want that stem to be, draw a circle. Now these are just simple pumpkins and so we're gonna go as deep as the bar is tall. So this bar is about that tall. I'm gonna go down until you know the chain is all in the wood. At that time, we'll walk around the carving carefully, getting into those cuts and removing those pieces. I'll show you what I mean. By doing that method, you know every cut is consistently the same depth. So at this time, you're going to take your bar and go in to about one of those cut lines. If you kind of do a sawing motion as you're cutting, you'll feel yourself pop through to the void from your first cut and you'll know to pull out, back in and work your way down. Carefully kick back, be safe. Ta-da, there's a stem. I'm gonna hit these corners, kind of round it over. As I do so, I'm gonna swoop them out just a little. All right, that's your stem. What do you wanna do next? You gotta come through at an angle and start trimming off that top. Just kind of round it over. So you're making cuts that'll look like wedges, kind of. You know, remember, a triangular cut will give you a rounder shape. So think triangular cuts. So I wanna round that top before I figure out how tall this pumpkin's gonna be. Now if you continue to go, I want it rounder, and you keep going, obviously you're gonna keep losing material, so at some point just, you know, stop. I'm gonna kinda carve into the top. We're gonna take the saw and angle it in, and go around just a little bit. Nothing crazy. Use the nose of the bar 
and kind of clean up the little lip you created on both sides. I'm also going to come through and hit the top of this because it kind of made like a peak and I don't want that. So we got our stem and where it attaches to the top of our pumpkin. It's time to figure out that height of your pumpkin. I'm going to come down about four, four and a half inches. So about there. And what I'm going to do is align all the way around. We're going to go in, I don't know. Maybe an inch. It's kind of going to depend on the girth of the log you're using. So I'm going to go in, I don't know, inch and a half, maybe two inches, and make that line all the way around. Try to make it straight. Now, there's times I'm walking and running this off. Don't do that. It's not safe. Get your body where you want it to be. Planted, firmer. Feet are firm and square on the ground. All right, so you're not walking, trying to do this circle. Plus your lines get way better when you do it this way. Now we need to round the bottom. That's as simple as taking the saw, angling it into the bottom and cutting down to your line. Now if you thought those cuts out ahead of the time, you're ahead of the curve you got your first cut this way maybe your second cut will be that way so these two angles line up and if you do that when you come in to make the lines for the pumpkin those angles will be with each other already consistently it might not make any sense but it, it might later how do we do those lines I come in at an angle so the bar is at an angle not straight you go straight you got a ton of sand in to do to make this thing look a little more lifelike Take a little extra time with your cuts, it'll save you in the long run. Plus it's gonna help you grow into, you know, not going, oh, how do I make that straight cut look better? Well, you already got past that. Now you can work on other details. So you figure out where you're gonna make your lines. You can either do it with a saw, or actually you can grab that crayon. You can go, all right, well, I wanna do a line here, here, I don't know, there, there, you know, there, there, there whatever works. Saw is angled and you're gonna come down and as you get down near the bottom, bring that angle in. This is a very light pass. You're more or less detailing. We're not making a deep cut. So I'm gonna do all the same angle around and then I'm gonna come back and do the angle from the other way, you know, back around the other way. All right, so if your wood is green at this time, all your bark is just gonna peel off. This piece is super dry and probably cut in the winter, so all my bark is stuck on there, which is a bummer because that makes more work for me. I'm gonna get that bark off and then I'll be right back. All right, use my hatchet, got all the bark off of here. Oh, and hey, if you're a kid watching this and you're enjoying these videos, don't try this stuff at home, okay? Like, don't do it. Talk to your parents first. This is can be dangerous, all right? Because I know I got some kids watching this channel that enjoy it, and that is awesome. Seriously appreciate it. Make sure you guys are hitting subscribe, and I'll keep making some cool videos. But don't try it at home, all right? Just have fun watching somebody else do it. Till you get older. All right, I'm gonna bust out the angle grinder and sand this thing up. We'll do that in high speed because it's kind of boring to watch. And before that, I'm gonna grab the die grinder with the flame bit, we're gonna go ahead and kind of refine this center line a little more. Now that makes some weird fuzzies, and so I can clean that up with the angle grinder after. So let's take the flame bit to it before the angle grinder, high speed now.
Alright guys, so I went around with the die grinder and cleaned everything up. Take that a little bit farther and kind of carve those grooves into the stem and make it come down here a little bit. You know, like a real pumpkin, think about it. If you're not sure, just look at some pictures online. You know, you've kind of got the grooves in the stem that come down and almost like a root that comes, makes me think of a tree root, comes down on the top of the pumpkin. So we're gonna put those in as well before we hit it with the, uh, the die grinder. So again, cue time lapse. The die grinder work is done. Get you guys in here so you can see the stem. So I had an accidental cut here earlier, right? You can see it real good that way. I went ahead and used the angle grinder or the die grinder with that flame bit to just kind of make all this shape. Everything's angled in a little this way, coming around the pumpkin. So it's kind of got that rounded in top. All right, so that's our top. Put you back over here. Now what I'm going to do is take the angle grinder and just clean it up. Soften these edges, get all this dark stuff off, and kind of get this thing ready for some paint. Alright, our pumpkin is sanded and it's almost time for paint. If you got an airline, blow it off. Cool. Got a torch? Grab it. Burn your fuzzies off in any spot you want the pumpkin to have a darker orange color. All right, now the best thing about chainsaw carvings is if you do not want to paint this, that's fine. Use your torch, go around and torch it up, make it look all cool and whatever, and uh, you're done. If you do want to paint it, grab yourself some orange paint do some of that. Spray this thing orange. The way your pumpkin comes out and the way it looks is entirely on you. It is. It's totally up to you. I'm just using a like a bright orange spray paint to make bright colored pumpkins. Pick whatever color you want. Purple, green, different orange, whatever. That's that. Now you could just have burnt this top a little more to have that dark color and just have it be a brown stem. Or, now's the time to grab that green spray paint. Just use that cardboard to kind of block some of the spray paint from hitting the orange. And it's also gonna be a little trick of the can and you know, finagle it around and make it work. Whatever you do though, grab a can that works. Ta-da! Done! That looks like a piece of candy to me. Alright, orange pumpkin, green top. Obviously you can use brown paint or just burn your top and paint it orange. Done. It is still attached to that base though, right? No big deal. You've got that chainsaw, take your saw, and cut yourself a nice flat bottom. That way when somebody buys this thing, it'll sit nice and flat. And then if you can, flip it upside down and put your initials in it because it's important to sign your work. But yeah, I would do those things once the paint dries. Normally I carve all my pumpkins, sand them, and paint them all detached. That way there everything can dry together, out of the way. I can work on the next pumpkin while this is air drying if it's green wood, and you can continue to move on. I did it this way just for you guys and for the sake of this video. The next time I come back, next video, we're going to be working on a jack-o'-lantern. More than likely, we're just going to be taking this actual pumpkin right here, still attached to the base, and we're going to go ahead and turn this into a jack-o'-lantern. Or we'll carve a new one. Who knows? We'll see. Be sure to hit subscribe and give this channel a thumbs up. And if you guys have noticed, I haven't had a ton of angles going on lately because my GoPros are just not really cooperating. So if you guys want to help support this channel, help me get closer to maybe buying a new GoPro or two, check out my Patreon account. There's a link to that down in the description. And that is also the place you'll find all the tools and bits and things that I'm using or similar items. Thank you guys again, and I'll see you next time.